So let me start by uh, giving you um, an overview of the previous lecture. So uh, here is the summary of lecture one, uh, and then I go into the, you know, into the, uh, into the materials that I'm going to present this time. Okay, so what we saw uh, previously was that the study of tropical geometry has been motivated by applications, both inside and outside of mathematics. And tropical geometry is kind of considered uh, as, a combinator, as a combinatorial shadow of algebraic geometry. So what do we mean by that? Is that, um, you know, last time I show you uh, like a degree three polynomial, like F in two variables, X and Y. And uh, I said, you know, we can draw the solution set or the corresponding curve of this polynomial. And then if you choose your field to be real numbers, so the curve would look like uh, the one on the left, right? And then we saw like how to tropicalize such polynomial and draw its corresponding hypersurface. And that would be the curve like in the middle, which is like the tropical hypersurface. And also we use this tropical hypersurface to uh, somehow subdivide uh, the corresponding Newton polytope of the polynomial, right? So here, because the polynomial that I have chosen before is of degree three. So I would take three copies of the unit triangle, like a triangle whose uh, edges are of length one, and three copies of that triangle. And then I would get this large triangle and I somehow like use the coefficients of my polynomial to lift the, you know, the vertices of this Newton polytope. Um, and to kind of go one, uh, one dimension higher and then project it back to get the subdivision of this Newton polytope. And the whole idea was that, you know, this uh, picture here, so it's more combinatorial, but at the same time it encodes, um, you know, a lot of you know, algebraic and geometric information that we were interested uh, to understand from the original polynomial, original curve. Okay, so what were those information? For example, the degree of the curve, you can read it from, uh, from these pictures. So what is the degree of a curve? So here the curve was coming from a polynomial of degree three. So that's, you know, uh, the, uh, somehow like the maximum exponents, like in my polynomial was three, like my polynomial could be x cubed plus uh, y square, et cetera. So that three was the degree or, uh, geometrically, you could take, uh, you know, a co-dimension one, um, like hyperplane here, which was just a line, and then intersect your line, like a generic line with this real curve. And then you would see that a generic line, you know, would um, intersect this curve like in three points, and this three was the degree, right? We could do the same, like in the middle, like in the tropical curve case, or, I mean, by that, I mean, you know, we can take like a tropical line that we saw, and then we could see that tropical line would intersect this uh, tropical curve like in three points. So that was the degree, or you could just count the number of rays going up, the number of rays going to the east and etc. Okay, so that was the degree. And from this um, subdivision picture, you could read the genus of, uh, you know, of this uh, curve. And the genus was exactly the number of interior points like in this uh, subdivision. Like in this picture, the number of interior points is just one. So that, that was a genus one curve. Okay, so these were a type of combinatorial data that we could read from tropical hyperplane or from a subdivided picture. And they kind of coincide with the original information about the curve. Okay, good. And uh, we, uh, we said, you know, somehow like the main uh, idea of tropical geometry is to provide a simple model of algebraic geometry. And many of these classical algebraic geometry theorems has been translated to kind of tropical version, which is more combinatorial, easier to prove, and perhaps like easier to understand. Okay, so, uh, for example, so one of these theorems uh, was like Bezu theorem. And like in Bezu theorem, you would take two algebraic planar curves of degree D and D prime. And by that, I mean, you know, you have two polynomials F and G, like polynomial F is of degree D, polynomial G is of degree D prime. And then you look at the solution space of these two polynomials, right? 
And if you look at the corresponding curve, you see that the C and C prime intersect looking exactly D times D prime points. So that was a classical version. And then you could translate it to the tropical version. And the translation would be if you compute the tropicalization of C and the tropicalization of the second curve C prime, Again, you know, they would intersect like in D times D prime points, but this time you uh, should be a little bit careful um, by counting the multiplicity of these intersection points. And what do we mean by that? So here, you know, I have a degree one curve and then I have a degree two curve, right? So like degree one curve depicted in blue. So degree two curve like in uh, red and they intersect like in two points. So I took, if you look at the union of these curves, so that would be, uh, if you look at the union of these curves, so that's another curve, that's another, you know, uh, coming from another polynomial, which is the product of this F and G. And then you could take this curve and then look at the corresponding uh, dual subdivision of their Newton polytope. Okay, so then you would get this picture like on the right. Um, and in this picture, like those regions like drawn in uh, red corresponds to the points like in the uh, tropical curve in red and uh, like blue would correspond to the blue part, blue curve. But then there are these kind of foregones that they are bicolored and they're corresponding to these intersection points. So I have two intersection points and they're corresponding to this foregone and also this is square. Okay, so my curve, uh, so these two curves have intersected like in two points, like these two intersection points correspond to these two regions. And uh, I have to count the multiplicity of each intersection point, which is the area of uh, these four foregones. So the area here is one times one, and then here is the same. So it, then the multiplicity is like one, and then one plus one is the number of intersection point. And then we can do the same here, which was not a generic case. And then you would see that, you know, in the picture, I can see just one intersection point. But if I go to the dual picture, so I can see that, so the area of this, uh, the area of this uh, square corresponding to the intersection point is two, and that kind of encodes the multiplicity of this intersection point. Okay, so perfect. Um, I think I forgot to say, but if you guys have any question, please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, you know interrupt me at any time. I think there I don't was see. One in the chat. Oh yes, uh, let me see if I can see the chat. Um, okay. Um, so where is the chat? Yes. So I can see the chat, but I don't see any question. Okay, it says, what about the number of real components of the curve? Can we read it from the right or middle picture? So I think real this was a couple of minutes ago. Oh, I see. So what are the real components of, of the curve? Oh, you mean like this part? Yeah. Uh, so for example, this guy has two uh, components. Yeah, let me think about it. Um, so I want to see this in terms of the... Yeah, I don't know it like at the top of my head. Um, okay. Yeah, let me think about it. I'm not sure. Okay, but actually this picture, so like depending on, you know, how these, um, how these uh, kind of, you know, two connected components intersect. So that might influence the uh, tropical line that you see here, the tropical picture that you see here. Like in a sense that, you know, if, uh, if they were like attached, if uh, this part was tangent to the other part, so then you wouldn't see like a hexagon here and the picture would be different. If that's what, I think that's what you're asking, right? So whether these two components has been encoded like in this picture, I think it somehow uh, shows, you know, what is the, I mean, how this, um, how this region looks like. And then if there was like an intersection, so uh, probably you wouldn't see this or you would see like a square or some other picture. Okay, so is there any other question? Okay, so this was just a summary of the previous lecture. And uh, um, so this time I'm going to put the references like at the beginning because that was at the end of my uh, slides last time. So my first lecture, lecture one, was actually like a summary of these two, uh, you know, the first one is a survey, very nice survey by 
Brugola and uh, Christine Shaw, which is called like a bit of tropical geometry. And the second one is a very nice uh, kind of lecture notes written by Johannes Rau. And um, somehow the most part of my previous lecture was coming from these two uh, lecture notes. And uh, this talk would be somehow, you know, the main materials are coming from the book by Diane McLagan and Bernd de Schrompfer's Introduction to Tropical Geometry. And I put the first um, uh, reference as well because it's more like from combinatorial point of view and it's more connected to the third lecture of, uh, of this series. Okay, perfect. So now let me start. What is the outline of this uh, talk? So we are going to talk about tropical varieties. So as we said, you know, uh, tropical varieties are uh, somehow combinatorial objects. And then during this talk, so we're going to realize them as polyhedral complexes. And I'm going to explain how to read them like as uh, somehow these, you know, geometric objects. Okay, good. So what is, you know, what is tropical geometry about? So tropical geometry, uh, you know, you can think of it as a new sort of algebraic geometry. So like in algebraic geometry, we are mostly like interested in system of polynomial equations and their solutions called varieties, right? So here, this is the same, because if you want to think of it as a new uh, kind of, you know, algebraic geometry, you want to say, okay, so I have polynomials and then have tropical polynomials or tropical varieties. And then I want to look at the common solutions of some system of polynomial equations. So, but the difference here is that, you know, usually like in algebraic geometry, you, uh, you're working like over complex number or over real uh, number, but then here you're going to work over tropical semi-fields, which are all real numbers. And then you also add this plus infinity to the list. Okay. And then you change like the uh, sum, the usual addition and the usual multiplication to the tropical sum and tropical multiplication when the tropical sum of two numbers is just defined to, uh, to take like their minimum and the tropical multiplication is taking their sum. Okay. And then, you know, similar to the previous uh, pictures that we had. So if you start from a degree three polynomial into variables, you might say, okay, so what is the space of, uh, what is the space that I'm looking for the solutions of this polynomial? So if you are working over real numbers, so that would be the picture that you might see if you are working like over complex number, you know, that's how the solution space looks like. And then if you're looking over tropical numbers, so that would be the solution space of the tropical polynomial. Right, so depending on what field you have chosen to work on, so you will see different sort of solutions. Okay, so what we've seen so far are tropical polynomials and tropical polynomials, we just defined them last time as you know, like a usual sum, like a tropical sum of bunch of terms. And these terms are such that you have coefficients and these coefficients are coming from these tropical numbers, tropical semi-ring. That means, you know, they're either real numbers or they're plus infinity. And then times, you know, these monomials like x to the u, when the exponent is just like an n vector, u1 up to un, and then you define them this way. And then here I have a typo, I think. I, I mean, you know, x to the u is like x1 to u1 times x2 to u2, xn to un. Okay, and then if I have this tropical sum, so I can write this in uh, usual arithmetic. So I would write this as the minimum of bunch of linear functions, right? That these linear functions are just a u plus u1 x1 up to un xn. Okay, I see that there is a question, but I, okay, here. Uh, let me see. Is a semi-field a one-point compactification or is it just adding the infinity to one uh, and of R? So for now, you know, let's say semi-field is just real numbers, union plus infinity. So I just want to think of them as like a set of numbers. Okay. So, um, okay. So you have this tropical polynomial and then you can translate them looking usual arithmetic as the uh, minimum of bunch of linear functions. Okay, 
And then we saw what is the solution space, what is the variety of a tropical polynomial, right? So we define them as the set of all points, like in this semi ring, in this R bar n, such that when you evaluate your tropical polynomial, those numbers, so you either get like infinity or the minimum in f of w is achieved at least twice. Okay, and the most important example from tropical geometry is this. A tropical line. So you have uh, this tropical line, which is defined as x plus y plus zero. So you have your tropical polynomial has three terms. And then we have to take the minimum of these three terms, minimum of x, y, zero. Okay. And this picture is in R2. And, you know, if your x and y are both positive, so you're in the positive orthont, so this minimum would be just zero. So that would be the value of your polynomial here, zero. If your x is, uh, you know, x and y are, are both negative, but x less than y, so then you are here, and uh, this value of f of, you know, these points would be x. And similarly, you get like y, like in the other part, right? But these, uh, I mean, these elements, so if you're in the interior, so if you're one of these points, so you're not gonna be like in the variety because we want the, uh, value of this f of w to be achieved at least twice, right? So to have, to fulfill these conditions, so you have to be like on these lines drawn here, right? So you have to be either here, so that means x, um, so here when x is equal to zero, or you have to be here when y is equal to zero, or here when x is equal to y. Okay, so that was a tropical line, and also there are uh, we have to also know that, you know, there are two points here, like in the variety. And because if you look at the point zero infinity and you plug in zero infinity, so the minimum um, is achieved twice, namely at X equal to zero and zero, right? And also infinity and zero is also like in my variety because if I plug it in like here, if I put infinity zero, zero, so the minimum is achieved at Y and zero. So these are also points like in my variety. Okay, so these were like tropical polynomials that what we saw last time, but now how about if I take arbitrary polynomials with arbitrary coefficients, can I tropicalize them? Like if given a polynomial the, uh, whose coefficients are coming from arbitrary field K, can I tropicalize this polynomial and write it down, you know, by, and by tropicalizing, I mean changing the usual plus to tropical plus and changing the usual multiplication to tropical multiplication, right? So it turns out that this is true. You can do that, but all you need is, uh, you know, you have, to, uh, you have to know how to treat the coefficients of your polynomial. And this is uh, possible if you, your field, your arbitrary field K comes with a valuation, which is a map from K to R bar, okay? So what do I mean by that? I mean, if you have a polynomial, which is the sum of x u, you know, a u x u, right? So you can tropicalize this, like in a usual way, like changing sum to tropical sum, multiplication to tropical multiplication. And then because this a u is like in a field k, you have to uh, kind of, you know, replace it with a tropical number. And for that number, you can choose like this image of the evaluation. Okay, and this valuation is a map from K to R bar with some specific properties that I'm going to show you like at the end of this talk. Okay, so, but the most important, so maybe the easiest example of this valuation is a, a trivial valuation, which you can define it by taking like every non-zero element in your K to send like every non-zero element of your K to zero and send zero to infinity. Okay, so that would be the trivial valuation. And what it means is that somehow like I ignore uh, this coefficient, right? Whenever I have a coefficient in my polynomial and then I tropicalize it, so this valuation would be zero. So then I, it's kind of equivalent to ignoring this coefficient. So that would be, uh, you know, the trivial valuation. And then just to recall, you know, what we saw like as the variety or as a solution space, what we defined as the solution space of the tropical variety is the set of all those points such that when I evaluate my tropical uh, polynomial, so I get 
either infinity or the minimum is achieved twice, right? So that's what we define as a variety of tropical polynomial. Um, but, you know, but there is this fundamental theorem of uh, tropical geometry that says like under mild condition, like on the field K, so you have a field K with evaluation under some condition like on your field K. So what we have defined actually as a solution of tropical polynomial makes sense in a sense that, you know, the solutions of tropical equations are exactly going to be the tropicalizations of the solutions. Okay, let me pause a little bit. What I'm saying is that, you know, you take an arbitrary polynomial, right? And then you know what is the variety, what is the solution space of your polynomial, and you tropicalize your polynomial. Okay, and then you look at the solution space of tropicalization, which, which is exactly what we defined here in terms of the, all those points that the tropical F, the value of tropical F, uh, the minimum value is achieved twice. And then this is going to be equal to taking the points in the solution space and tropicalize them. And by that, I mean taking their values like under this valuation map. Okay, so for now, for now, all I want to say is that this definition of the, uh, you know, of the solution space of tropical polynomial makes sense in a sense that these are really coming from the solutions of these polynomials. Okay, and then I, I'm going to tell you more about the fundamental theorem at the second half of my talk. Are you going to show an example? I don't, yeah, this last line, I really don't understand. So yes. suppose the field is real and the valuation is just the identity. Is that, about, is that, is that about trivial valuation? valuation? No, yeah. the identity valuation. Yes. So Mag, let me just answer your question at the end of the talk because I'm going to mainly focus like on the, you know, on this polyhedral complex. I mean, so, uh, in this slide, I just wanted to show you that these solution space of the tropical polynomials, because we just take them as a definition, right? This solution space makes sense, like in a, in a way that you know, they are really coming from the solutions of polynomials. But then in the second part of my talk, I will, I will define them like in a concrete way. So I will tell you, you know, what is the evaluation? What is the example of the evaluation? And then what is a precise version of the fundamental theorem? Okay, let me just postpone your question like to, the, to the end and then you can repeat it like if you don't get, that, get the answer. Is it okay? Okay. So, um, yeah, so far, you know, all I wanted to say is that these, um, this definition somehow makes sense, right? So it's not, it's related to what we know as the variety of polynomials and the variety of tropical polynomials. Okay, perfect. So, you know, so far we defined the variety and the solution space of polynomials, and then you can say what is the variety of a system of polynomial equations, right, or defining ideal of these polynomials. And what do I mean by that? So you take, you know, S polynomials F1 to Fs, like in polynomial ring K, X1 to Xn, and then you, uh, you know, you look at the corresponding ideal of these polynomials. So that means all these polynomials that they are generated by these by these guys with coefficients coming from the polynomial ring, right? So we look at this ideal, and then what is the common solutions of this F1 to Fs? So that's exactly the variety of this I. You know, this common solution is defined to be the variety of I or the intersection of the solution space of any polynomial in this ideal, right? So this is a variety of the generated ideal. So now the question is how, how do I compute this tropicalization of the variety of I? So if I have this VI, so what is its tropicalization? So we're gonna do the same. So here we're gonna, you know, here we had the ideal generated by these guys. Here we're gonna look at the tropicalization of ideal trop I. And to construct trop I, you need to take all polynomials in your ideal that are infinitely many of them and you tropicalize all of them. So that would be your trop I, okay? And then the tropicalization of the variety is defined to be the common solutions of all those tropical polynomials. Okay, let me repeat again. So you have your ideal I generated 
by finitely many polynomials, you take every, every polynomial in this ideal, which are infinitely many of them, you tropicalize all of them, you know how to compute the solution of each tropical polynomial from the previous slide, and you just intersect like all those solution spaces. And what you get is going to be the tropicalization of the variety of I. Okay, so is there any question here? Okay, so now the first question would be, you know, this is kind of, um, yeah, you know, this is too much, right? So you have infinitely many polynomials to compute their tropicalization, and hence infinitely many of these, uh, you know, the varieties that, that you have to intersect. So like here, I'm going to show you like an example that um, this is actually kind of, you know, not easy, like computing the tropicalization of ideal, because this is, uh, yeah, uh, this is some of like the simplest example that you can see that things might go wrong. So, okay, so I have uh, so I have just included here the definition of the trop i and the trop tropicalization of its variety, just we recall. And then let's take the simplest, you know, ideal that we know, right? So the, the principal ideal generated by just one polynomial. So I have one polynomial G like in two variables x and y, which is defined as x minus 3y plus 5. And then I look at the principal ideal generated by this guy. So like in the polynomial ring k, x, y. Okay. And then let's take the, you know, the trivial valuation, which sends like every non-zero coefficient to zero, right? So then the tropicalization of this polynomial is going to be x, plus y plus zero, right? Because every coefficient, so every number maps to, is going to be mapped to zero, right? So that would be zero trop multiplication with x, which is x, and then plus zero trop multiplication with y plus the valuation of this number, trivial valuation, which is zero. So I get the tropicalization of this polynomial is going to be this, uh, function here, which is x plus y plus zero. And we already know what is this, uh, you know, what is this tropical polynomial and what is the variety of this tropical polynomial, right? So this is just the tropical curve that we saw like in the previous slide. Okay, so that's a tropical line. And uh, so now I'm going to compute the tropicalization of the variety of this ideal. So, and then we see that, you know, the ideal is generated by one polynomial. So we might expect that, you know, this tropicalization of I might also, might be also generated by this tropicalization of G, but we see that, you know, this is not the case here. Okay, so even though the ideal is principal, so a tropicalization of ideal is not principal. And to see this, you can take, um, okay, so you can take two polynomials, your ideal, so namely, you know, x times g should be in my ideal, right? And also 3y times g should be in my ideal. So I take these two polynomials and I tropicalize each of them. Okay, so I get here the tropicalization would be x squared plus xy plus x, you know, with a trivial valuation again. And tropicalization of 3yg is like x times y plus y squared plus y, right? And then I also look at the polynomial, which is the sum of these two polynomials, because that guy is also in my ideal, right? So I take like the polynomial H to be the sum of these two polynomial. And then I obtain this polynomial here, which again, you know, I can compute its tropicalization. But what I notice here is that, you know, I have in particular chosen this example because when I sum up these two numbers, the term 3xy and minus 3xy would cancel each other. Okay, so the tropicalization doesn't have any term of form like xy. So, um, and the question is whether this trop h can be written in terms of combination of trop g with, you know, which is in the tropical, in the r bar xy the polynomial ring with coefficients in R bar? And the answer is no, right? Because if you, if you look at this guy, so it has to have, because you have X squared, so that means, you know, this polynomial should be uh, multiplied by X. But then as soon as you multiply it with X, you have a term XY, 
but this guy doesn't have x y so you have to somehow like cancel out this term but this is not possible because in the in tropical geometry we don't have subtraction so there is no way to cancel like these terms right so this tropicalization of h cannot be written in terms of a combination of trop g so what i mean by this example is that i started from a from one polynomial and the ideal generated by one polynomial but i just showed you that this tropicalization of my ideal cannot be generated by the trop tropicalization of that single polynomial and i need to add more and more elements like to the ideal so namely you know i need to have like this trop edge and perhaps other polynomials as well okay so um, so this polynomial cannot be written as a combination of that guy and tropical, uh, yes. But again, you know, if you look at the tropicalization of this variety, it would be just a simple tropical line. Okay, so like my point of this example would be that the tropical ideals could be really complicated to write down their generators, their generating set or the minimal generating set, but um, even though you know their corresponding variety are the simplest one that we know, so that's just the uh, tropical line. Okay, so so far we saw the definition of uh, polynomials again, tropical polynomials, their corresponding hypersurface, and the common solutions of tropical polynomials and this trop uh, of vi. Is there any question here? Yes, yep. I'm uh, not too familiar with all this mathematics, but it seems to me that maybe somewhere existing algorithms that do the elementary operations in mind that your lectures request. Okay, like every step in your lecture, mm -hmm. I have to do a lot of arithmetics in my hand, in my head, sorry, not in my hand. And maybe there is, maybe somebody will come up with that to do algorithms that I press a button and it gives me some picture of what I'm supposed to think about so fast. Yes. Yeah, this is absolutely true. <laughs> yes. So there are a lot of people, this is a very active field, like, you know, computational tropical geometry, a lot of people uh, working like on computational stuff, like in, you know, in this direction. And you are absolutely right. But still, you know, this sort of compute uh, computation can be really bad, like as soon as, you know, you enlarge your ideal or the number of polynomials, etc. Right, as, as long as we go, so I can actually, so in the next um, talk, so I will show you like the simplest examples that cannot be computationally done. Okay, okay so, so for you, example. If you have references for things like that, at the beginning of being introduced to, to this, that would be very useful as a, even educational tool. Yes. So the, um, some people are very fast doing that, but uh, I have to admit in public that I'm I don't belong to this group. No, no, you're absolutely right, and it was too fast, perhaps. But I um, I wasn't expecting you guys, you know, do the computation, do the calculation right now. So I just wanted to show you that, you know, if you so like in this special example that if you have just one, uh, if you have just one polynomial and look at its corresponding ideal, so this tropicalization could be, you know, way too complicated. So the tropicalization of the ideal, and they are. And in general, so under you know certain conditions like on your field, so um, so this tropicalization of ideals can be, uh, or let me say like this tropicalization of the variety can be always written as the uh, finite fine um, you know as the intersection of finitely many uh, hypersurfaces. And then in that case, you know, these polynomials are called tropical bases, but computing such sets are not easy. And then the next lecture we actually show, you know, we would see what are these tropicalization just for linear spaces, like linear vector spaces, that even for those guys, you know, this computation can be heavy and, and there are lots of open questions like in this direction. Okay, wonderful, thanks. Yeah, thank you.
But as a reference, I, I definitely highlight, you know, the book by uh, the book Introduction to Algebraic Geometry, which has a lot of examples, both computational, combinatorial, and shows you like, you know, what might go wrong, like doing this sort of like computations. Okay, and they are programs like Macaulay 2 um, and uh, Polymake that you can, you know, the, uh, so I can give like some small examples, some ideals, tropical polynomials, and then ask for the, even for the picture of the corresponding variety. Okay, good. So, but the focus of my lecture today, sorry, let me double check the time. Okay, so the focus is going to be the structure theorem. So what is the structure theorem? Is that if you have, you know, S polynomials, like F1 to Fs, and then you look at their corresponding ideal and the solution space of this, uh, you know, this um, set of polynomials, or namely the variety of this ideal. So let's X be the variety, uh, you know, of dimension D, and then let's assume this is an irreducible variety, then tropicalization of X is going to be the support of an all-rational polyhedral complex of dimension D, which has some nice properties, namely it's pure, balanced, and connected through dimension one. So from now on, so I, I'm going to, uh, you know, take this theorem and actually define like all the notions here, because that's a very powerful theorem which translates, uh, you know, tropical varieties into polyhedral complexes. And that would be super useful when you want to prove theorems or when you want to design algorithms like in tropical geometry. In particular, you know, this last property that uh, tropicaliz tropicalization of the varieties are polyhedral complexes connected through dimension, co-dimension one. So this is, um, this is frequently used like in designing, you know, uh, algorithms like in computational tropical geometry. Okay, so if you let me, then you, I define, you know, all these notions and I'm going to start from the scratch to make sure we are all on the same page. Okay, so this is one of the most important theorems like in tropical geometry. Okay, so let's have a crash course like on polyhedral geometry. So let's start by the definition of the polyhedron. So I'm looking at polyhedrons in Rn, and I'm going to define them as the intersection of finitely many half spaces. So what is the half a space? You are basically, um, you know, you can uh, think you are in R3 and then you have hyperplanes, and the hyperplane is defined, but it's normal vector. And I want these normal vectors to be, you know, to have rational coordinates. Okay, so given any rational vector Qn in Qn and any real number, so you can define like a hyperplane, which is a set of all those points like in Rn, such that the inner product of X and A is just B. Okay, so that's the equation of the hyperplane. And every hyperplane divides, divides your Rn space into two half spaces, right? The positive part, the negative part. And if you have finitely many of them, so the intersection of finitely many of them would be uh, called like a polyhedron. So here, so I have a pentagon, right? And it's defined as the intersection of five hyperplanes. So basically you have these five lines and I have chosen them such that I'm always looking at the positive side of these hyperplanes. Okay, so this is like a polytope, right? All the polytopes that you know, all the polygons, you know, they are, uh, they are like in this family of polyhedrons. And uh, also, so this intersection of half spaces could be also unbounded, right? For example, here I have a cone and you see that, you know, it's been, um, generated as the intersection of seven hyperplanes. So these are the boundary of my cone, right? And so the cone is a pointed cone. So that means, you know, I have, a, I have zero here and I have an intersection of these seven hyperplanes like in the boundary of this cone. Okay, so that's a polyhedral cone unbounded, but on the right, so there is like, maybe ice cream cone, and that cannot be written as the intersection of finitely many uh, half spaces, right? So I have this round space and I cannot write it like in terms of the intersection of finitely many, um, 
finitely many half spaces. Okay, so that's the definition of polyhedron. And if I have, and um, I would like to define the, look at the faces of a polyhedron. So what are the faces? So I take all these planes, all these hyperplanes H, such that my, my polyhedron is in one side of those uh, hyperplanes, okay? And for every such hyperplane, if I look at the intersection of my polygon with those hyperplanes, so I obtain a face of polytop, a uh, polyhedron, sorry. So for example here, so if I choose these sort of lines, right? So this line intersect my um, polygon, like in just one point, which is the vertex, right? So that would be one face of my polyhedron. Or if I choose my hyperplane to be here, so then there is no intersection. The intersection is empty set and empty set is also counted as a face of my polyhedron. And also similarly, you know, if I take like a line a kind of tangent to uh, this polygon, so I take the one dimensional face, which is um, somewhat like this line here. Okay, so these are the faces of my uh, polyhedron. So maybe just to make sure that we are all on the same page, you can look at this uh, polyhedron here and, and write like in the chat that how many faces does this polytop have? Like counting empty set, you wanna count empty set, you know, um, the intersections that they're giving you the zero dimensional faces, namely the vertices, and also the intersection of those, you know, hyperplanes giving you the one dimensional faces that they are the edges of my polyhedron, right? Okay, so what we're gonna see here is that, you know, you have empty set, five vertices, five edges, right? Mm, okay, so, okay, why do I not see the chat here? Yeah, uh, 12, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, so maybe, so that's good actually. I'm, uh, I'm counting them like as 11 because by this definition, so this, you know, the whole polytope is not a face. Okay, so that was good, right? So the empty face, so the five vertices and also the edges, but not the whole polytope. Because if, you know, I've defined them, um, to define the face, I need, I first need like a hyperplane uh, such that my poly my polyhedron is either like in the positive side or the negative side. And if you choose the hyperplane uh, to contain your polyhedron, so that's not going to be, the intersection is not going to be counted like as a face. Okay, yeah, perfect. So how many, uh, yeah, and then what is the dimension of these faces? Exactly, uh, we just said, you know, the vertices are counted of dimension zero, the edges of dimension one, and this polyhedron itself is of dimension two because it lives like in a, you know, on a plane, affine vector space of dimension two. Okay, so, and then we saw the definition of the polyhedron cone, which is again, you know, um, this, is a, this is an example of the polyhedron. Yeah, polyhedral cones are examples of polyhedral. And then you can see that, um, you know, um, so here you can read them like as the intersection of half spaces, or you can read them like as a positive combination of some vectors that they are considered to be the rays of, uh, of this polyhedral cone. Okay. And we also have like the polyhedral fan, which is going to be a a collection of polyhedral cones such that they intersect nicely in a sense that the intersection of any pair of cones is a face of both of them. So for example, here I have two, uh, uh, two um, you know, polyhedral cones, one here, which was from the previous example, right? And then one here, and they intersect like in a ray. They intersect like while you're on edge of both of them. Right, so that's a polyhedral fan, but here I don't have a polyhedral fan because I have three cones and each of them are generated by two vectors or by two half spaces. However, their intersection is not a face. It's like a two dimensional, uh, you know, region, which is not a face of each of them. Okay, so, and then similarly, you can define a polyhedral complex in more, generality as a collection of polyhedra in Rn such that 
the intersection of any two polyhedra is a face of both, similar to the polyhedral fan structure. Um, is that sorry, a question? Can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, yes, sure. So on the previous slide, when you defined yes. uh, faces, um, yes. I think it was the slide before this. Uh, yeah, here. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, when you define a face, you say for any hyperplane where the polyhedral lies inside one uh, half space, then the intersection of the polyhedron and the half space is a face. But wouldn't that just be the whole of the polyhedron? Uh, yeah, the whole. I, I should say H. Yeah, exactly. So that's a title. Okay. So I should say then. Yes. Thank you. So that should be H. Yes. But then does does the the hyperplane have to be one of the hyperplanes that generated P, or can it just be any hyperplane? No, that could be like any hyperplane. Okay. Yes, so because you know here in this example could be also this hyperplane, right? Yeah, so corners can be, okay, yeah. yeah. Yes. Right, okay, so um, with the polyhedral fan, is that not the corner that they all intersect at? Does that not mean they all meet at a face? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? So like in the polyhedral cone, you mean here, here? Uh, no, the, the one next, sorry, the next one, the polyhedral fan. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that's not a polyhedral fan, uh, even this though- This is a polyhedral fan. Yeah, but the one on the right isn't, even though they all intersect at a point. So the, intersec drawing. the intersection- That's a two-dimensional drawing. Oh, yes. right, okay. The intersection in a point is fine, so, but the inter you know, this overlap ah, on okay. our two-dimensional stuff is not fine. Oh, okay, I thought it was a 3D yes. picture. Right, sorry. <laughs> Thank you No, no, okay. So that's a two-dimensional yeah, picture. Yeah, I made the same mistake. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Okay, okay thank you. So I have three two-dimensional cones, right? And then they intersect. Yeah, I draw them like in a plane. Okay, yeah. Okay, perfect. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. Cheers. Sure. Uh, so, okay. So we have the polyhedral complex um, as a union of, you know, collection of polyhedra that they intersect nicely. And then what is the support set of a polyhedral complex? So that would be the set of all points like in Rn contained in the polyhedral complex. So like here, you know, every point like in this, in this part would be in the support, but anything, you know, outside, anything here is outside of the support. Okay, so that's the support set. And then what is a pure complex, pure polyhedral complex? By that, I mean, you know, if your polyhedral complex is a union of, uh, uh, of a collection of polyhedra. So then each of them, uh, each of these maximal polyhedra should have the same dimension. So for example, here, again, you know, this is not the polyhedra, uh, this is not the polyhedral complex, but this is. And then if you look at the, so um, this polyhedral fan is the union of two polyhedral cones, each of them are of dimension three. Okay, and that's fine. But then here, um, you know, uh, I have a polyhedral fan of dimension two, and if I take the union of these two guys is again like a polyhedral complex, which is not connected, this is fine. However, is not pure because this one is of dimension two. You know, one of the cells are of dimension two, the other ones are of dimension one, of dimension three. Okay. So that's called a pure complex, pure polyhedral complex. And, you know, in order to uh, complete the formulation of the structure theorem, so we need one more definition, one more important definition, which is called the balanced uh, polyhedral fans. What do we mean by that? So we're going to take uh, like a one dimensional rational polyhedral fan. This is a one dimensional uh, rational polyhedral fan, uh, you know, with, uh, with rays like row one up to row K, and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put some weight on the rays. So here I have four rays. Okay, so that's a one dimensional polyhedral fan. And you know, these are the multiplicity look on each ray, six, seven, 10, five, okay? And then I'm going to take, you know, the primitive vector on each ray. And that means the first rational point on each ray. Okay, so like here, so the first rational point is going to be one, zero. So here, the first rational point is three, one, minus one, three, minus one, minus five. So we take the first rational point and this fan is going to be called balance if you, know, you multiply these multiplicities with these vectors and you sum them up. So you're gonna get like a zero vector back. 
okay? So I'm going to repeat. So if you take, for example, six times this vector, the first, you know, rational point on each ray, and then plus seven times this vector plus 10 plus five times minus one minus five, and then you sum them up, you get the vector zero, zero back. Okay, and that's called balance. And people usually define it in a way that, you know, you have a, you know, here you have an object and, um, you can imagine that you know people are staying like on these rays and there are ropes connecting these objects and then you ask you know this guy standing on the point minus one three to kind of pull this rope with his strength six so the other guy you know standing on point three one pulling this with his strength seven etc and this object should be balanced should not be you know move around so that means um, this sum should be zero zero Okay, so this is called uh, balanced polyhedral fan for one dimensional rational polyhedral fan. But the same way you can define it for higher dimensional fans that I'm not going to define, you know, what it means, but it's quite similar that instead, you know, you look at, uh, you look locally, look at each um, kind of, you know, at each facet and then at each uh, co-dimension one phase and all the areas around. And then you always see like a one dimensional rational fan and that should have these sort of properties. Okay, so yes, yeah, so I had, um, so I have another example here that you know, I have drawn uh, what are the first rational points here with some multiplicity. And the question is what multiplicity makes this fan balanced? So I'm not going to be able to do this arithmetic here is after midnight, but if you want to try, maybe you plug in your answer in the chat. And I think there is a question. Um, let me let me double check the chat. Okay, I don't see the question. Generalize the rational points on the array. Um, so uh, I don't Sorry, understand Fatima, the that was that was an answer to the question. Not oh, okay, question. so I don't see yeah, the problem is I don't see the you know I don't see the whole chat. I mean I only see the last line. Okay, is it fine or is that like a question? Okay, so what I mean here is that you know you take the first rational point on each ray, right? And then I have chosen my uh, my polyhedral fan to be a rational, meaning that you know it contains such a point. Okay, good. So if you've done this example, um, you see that you know it's uh, to get uh, to get like a balanced polyhedral fan here. So I have to choose uh, this multiplicity of this vector to be two, such that you know the sum is zero. Okay, are we good? Okay. So um, and. Uh, you know, there was just one more definition for this structure theorem, which was if you have a polyhedral complex, what it means, if you have a polyhedral complex of dimension D, what it means to be connected through co-dimension one. Co-dimension one, that means, you know, if like maybe I show this like in, in my example, so I have a polyhedral complex here, which is the union of four polygons, right? So that's a polyhedral complex. And I want to have this property. This is of dimension two, right? This is on plane. And I want to double check whether, you know, for every pair of, um, every pair of these maximal dimensional faces, somehow like this yellow square at the pinky square. So there is a path connecting them via co-dimension one faces. So here co-dimension one means one dimensional that they are edges. So for example, I can start from here, move to the green uh, polygon by, you know, uh, that they intersect like in an edge. And from there, I can go through this um, next polygon again, while you're on edge, and then here reach the, reach the second polygon, right? So these polyhedral, this polyhedral complex is connected through co-dimension one. But if I add another square here, which is connected just in one vertex. So my polyhedral complex is still connected. However, is not connected through co-dimension one, right? Because there is no way to reach from this, um, 
purple is square to the pink one going via edges, right? So there is no such a path, and this is uh, not connected in co-dimension one because the intersection is just one vertex. Okay, so what I would like to have is Sorry, to find the path. Yes. Could I ask, is this, uh, is the white square supposed to be oh, the white? In? Yeah, exactly. So that's also okay. filled in by white. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, and this specific property that being connected through code dimension one is very useful in computational tropical geometry because this is frequently used like in the algorithms. And the reason is that, okay, maybe I'll show you this like in the example, this is like a polyhedral complex. And the reason is that, you know, you can sometimes by some mean you can compute like one of the, one of the maximal cells in your, in your um, tropical space. Okay, you can compute such a cell. And then this tells you that all these maximal cells are connected in co-dimension one. So you sit like on this cell, let's say of dimension D, and you look at the corresponding, um, you look at its, its maximal dimensional faces that they're all of dimension D minus one. And then you go there and then you know that this D minus one face might connect you know, to another maximal dimensional cell. And you use this somehow like to locally move and then find all those cells like in your tropical um, variety. Okay, so if you've seen this like in the in commutative algebra, so this is very much similar to this Grobner walk, Grobner basis theory, that you compute one, one point in, uh, you know, in your tropicalization, and then you use certain local moves to reach to another point like in the tropicalization. Okay, is there any question here? Um, okay, so if... Uh, uh, there was a question uh, that James had. Um, I think it's an important one. If uh, mm -hmm. when we say a rational point, we mean an integral point, right? Uh, oh, you mean like in like here? Yes. Um, I think they could be also rational. I think they could be rational, so there is no need to be integral. And on what, the, what does on what the x first, axis? What would that what would that mean? The first rational point. What do I mean? The first rational point here. It's say the x axis even. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Sorry. Okay. Okay. You're no right. First rational point. There's a first yes, integral yes, point yes. though. Okay. So yeah. The anyway. first integral point. Yes. Oh, okay. So whenever I mean, okay, now you understand the question. So whenever I say rational polyhedral fan or rational polyhedron, so I mean, you know, this defining when you uh, when you look at, I mean, this polyhedron has been defined as the intersection of finitely many hyper hyper um, hyper planes, right? And I want the normal vector of these hyperplanes to be rational, to have rational coordinates. Okay. Is there any other question? Um, okay, so if not, so then maybe I repeat, you know, what we, what we have stated like as a structure theorem that if you start from any reducible variety of dimension D, so it's tropicalization is going to be like a polyhedral complex and uh, with nice properties. For example, it's pure, all its maximal cells are going to be of the same dimension, of the same dimension D. So it's going to be balanced, meaning that, you know, if I look at any point locally, so then I see this fan, you know, this uh, polyhedral fan of dimension one. Okay. And then there is a notion of multiplicity here. And then, uh, so my corresponding fan is going to be, uh, to be balanced. And also this is connected of co-dimension one. And then you see it again, look in this picture that if I mean this cell, okay. So this cell is connected to the next cell by a plane here, which is of dimension two or co-dimension one, because this picture is in, dimension three, right? And then you get this sort of uh, polyhedral complexes as tropicalization of varieties. Okay, so, um, so maybe a little bit about the proof. I, I can just tell you that, you know, these proving that this is pure 
is very easy. So proving that um, this balance, being balanced is more like, you know, um, somehow um, you need to define, you need to find these multiplicities to say there exist such multiplicities. And that's also easy, like doing a little bit of commutative algebra, but proving that this is co connected through co-dimension one is the hard part, which needs a lot of, uh, you know, classical algebraic geometry tools. Okay, so there's another, I see that there is a question, but I don't see the question. Um, oh, okay, so there is, uh, did I do some arithmetic uh, errors? Okay, could be, yeah. Okay, I double check before putting my slides online. So, um, so that was the structure theorem. And the, yeah, another natural question is, you know, the realizability problem. And that says, you know, we proved, we just showed that every, uh, every reducible variety, for every reducible variety, so it's corresponding tropicalization, it's super nice polyhedral complex, right? But you can ask, uh, how about the reverse of this theorem? Meaning that if I start from a polyhedral complex with all these nice properties, like pure, balanced, connected in co-dimension one, whether there exists an irreducible variety, such that you know its tropicalization is going to be this polyhedral complex. And it turns out that this is not true, and we're gonna see this actually uh, more in uh, in next lecture. And if you know a matroid theory, that's very much related to matroid theory and realizability of matroid theory. Okay, and uh, what we saw like as a complex somehow uh, you know is said like for example. Uh, again, next uh, during next lecture, we're going to see that these sort of like complexes for some special linear spaces are defined as tropical linear spaces. But also, you have a notion of tropicalized linear spaces, meaning that they are realizable, and there is a linear space whose tropicalization gives you these sort of complexes. Okay, so I'm going to um, yeah, I'm going to explain this later um, in the next talk. But for now, I don't know, do I have maybe, uh, how much time do I need? Do I have maybe 10 minutes or am I already over time? Um, you're over time, but you can continue. I can we continue. can go in the break. So Tony is not here, so I can, <laughs> I can continue during the break. Okay, good. So maybe I tell you a little bit about this um, fundamental theorem. Um, and then, you know, if you have question, you can also ask. Okay, because there was already a question, right? I'm just answering the question. I'm not going over time. So here is the fundamental theorem again. You know, I defined uh, tropicalization of ideal as the tropicalization of all those polynomials in my ideal that there are like infinitely many of them. And then we also defined the tropicalization of the variety of I as the intersection of all these, the variety of all these tropical polynomials, right? And uh, so this uh, fundamental theorem says that, you know, the solutions, the solutions of these tropical equations are exactly the tropicalization of the solutions of the original variety. And by that, I mean, you know, the tropicalization of my ideal can be, uh, can be obtained as, as this way, that you take all those points like in the solution space of your original ideal and you tropicalize them. And by tropicalization, I mean, you take the coordinate wise valuation of these points. Okay, so that's the fundamental theorem. And I'm going to tell you what are these valuations and then how to do this like in an example. Okay, so this is just to tell you what, what's going to come next. Okay, so what is this valuation? As I said, you know, this valuation is a map that you can define for every field. So like, um, so you have an arbitrary field K and you can define this valuation to as a map from K to R bar. And these R bar are just like tropical numbers such that, you know, it satisfies like certain properties. Okay, so you define this valuation and, uh, you know, these are important looking like uh, tropical geometry, but the most 
uh, somehow like the easiest valuation that you can define over any field would be this tropical valuation. That if you define your valuation map such that takes like every element of your K to zero and also takes the zero element to infinity. So then you already have a valuation over your field. Okay, so that's the trivial valuation. And there is another one which shows up like a lot like in um, you know, in tropical geometry, and that's a valuation coming from Puzu series. And by that, I mean, you know, your, uh, you, um, your field is like Puzu series, which is like the, you know, you have infinitely many terms. And these terms are, you know, I mean, you can think of them as like polynomials, but with infinitely many terms, like in variable t, and the t takes rational exponents, and the coefficients are just like complex numbers. Okay, so you define like this Puzu series and the valuation of every element of the Puzu series is just the minimum exponent of T in that expression. Okay, so let's see an example. So here is the valuation, here is one Puzu series and then the valuation is going to be the minimum exponent in this expression, right? And then I have, you usually write them like in an increasing order. So here the smallest exponent is going to be three over five, and that's going to be defined as the valuation. Or the valuation of the second uh, position here is going to be four plus t one over five plus plus. And uh, maybe you can type your answer. What is the valuation of this series? Okay. So so we are going to look at the minimum exponent of t in that expression. Okay, am I too fast or does it still make sense what I'm saying? Okay, zero, yes, perfect. So then, you know, you look at the smallest exponent here, which is t to the zero, right? So that's a coefficient of four. And then this valuation is going to be defined as zero. Okay, so now remember, you know, I defined the tropicalization of every polynomial. We take like every polynomial with coefficients on k over k when the k has a valuation. So now the tropicalization is going to be just, you know, this, um, I mean, this tropical sum that you change, you know, plus to, uh, to tropical addition, multiplication to tropical multiplication and the coefficient to, uh, to the value of the coefficient, right? So then with the trivial valuation, we just saw that you know, what would be the tropicalization of this polynomial, all the coefficients are going to be zero, right? In the value, um, like when you do the uh, trivial valuation. So it's going to be, the tropicalization is going to be X cube, tropical sum, X, Y, four, tropical sum, Y, six. And then that would be the minimum of these three terms. Okay. And then if you have Puzu series, so you can do the same, right? You can just, you, know, you can just change this plus to tropical sum and then compute the valuation of each coefficient. So the valuation of the first one would be the smallest exponent of T that you see here, which is again zero, right? Minus three times T to the zero. So that would be zero X cube plus tropical sum. And then here, the smallest you know, exponent is going to be three over two. And then here again, um, this is zero, right? So the tropicalization is going to be this polynomial and so on. So maybe I don't go to the last example. Okay, but what is important is that you start from any polynomial in any, you start from any polynomial in any polynomial ring with whose, coef, you know, whose field has a valuation and then you can tropicalize that polynomial. And then if you don't have a valuation, you might just take the trivial valuation as the, you know, as the most natural one. Okay. Okay, perfect. And then we go back to this theorem now again. What do we mean by this fundamental theorem? Maybe we just do one example. Is that let's say my ideal I genera is generated by two polynomials. 
Okay, so my poly, uh, so the ideal I is generated by x minus t and y minus t cube. And this is, I'm working like in the Puzu series, right? So that's my field. So, um, you know, if I take, if I look at the variety, the solution space of these, the common solution of these two polynomials, right? So this x minus, that means like I put x minus t equal to zero, y minus t cube equal to zero, and the solution would be just one, uh, you know, would be just one point, which is t and t cube, right? So the variety is going to be t, t cube. And then now the theorem tells me that, you know, I can also, uh, the theorem tells me that the solution, the tropicalization of this variety is the tropicalization of this point, like taking the value of this point. And the if you take the valuation, so a t, the value of t would be one, and the image of the value of t cube would be three, right? So the trop vi should be just one, three. Okay, so that's an easy check. And then if I want to do tropicalization VI with the definition that we saw before, that you know, I take my polynomial ideal, I look at all um, polynomials in my ideal, and then I tropicalize all of them, and then I intersect their corresponding variety. So here, for example, so you can just take these two. And then you know they're tr tropicalized it. So x minus t would be tropicalized to x plus one, and then y minus t cube to y plus three. Okay, so I take you know x tropical sum and then the value of t, which would be one, and y tropical sum and the value of t cube, which would be three, right? So I take these two, and then if I intersect it, so I get again the same. Uh, I mean the same uh, point back, right? Because if I think of it, sorry, this is, this should be like tropical sum here. So the variety of x plus one. So what how we define this variety was that, uh, you know, I have to look at all those points that the value of those points like in this polynomial, the minimum is achieved twice, right? So my polynomial has only two terms, x, x and one. So to get the minimum twice, so I have to choose like my x to be one. And then here the same, I have to choose my y to be three. Okay, and you know, that's the, somehow like that's a check for, for this um, theorem, for this fundamental theorem. And I stop here, but then I put my slides and then you can see the next example, which was the easiest one, this tropical line one, right? That we had this tropical line, tropical line, we have defined this as the solution of x tropical sum y tropical sum zero. And then you can see that you can obtain the same uh, variety by looking at the, uh, by taking the valuation of the solution space. Okay, sorry for going over time, but I stop here, please ask me questions if you have any, thank you. Fatima, um, yes. when we have a, uh, when we're trying to look to see whether we have a balanced fan and mm -hmm. we have these weights, could the weights be ne uh, negative or, or are they always positive? The weights could be also negative, yes. Ah, I see. Okay, I think that's probably um, what happened in the example. I think it should have been weights, minus 10. Uh, or maybe my example was not necessarily good, right? Okay, let me think about it. The weights are actually not, they are the multiplicities of uh, in the commutative algebra sense, right? Uh, so maybe so they, they cannot be, be they better be positive, yes. Positive, yeah. uh, yes, I think so. So maybe this example, I mean, you know, it wasn't necessarily coming from this tropicalization, right? I just draw some. Which one? Hmm. This sure. one? Yeah, I just draw some polyhedral fan to make it balanced, like to check the balance property. Yes. Got it. Okay, is there any question? Uh, I have a question. Um, do, it, yes. do, um, 
the, maybe an e easy example of, of a field for which the fundamental theorem does not hold? Uh, the fundamental theorem does not hold. Oh, so you mean what are the properties like on the field? So because I said- No, just know, an example. Some... Just mm -hmm. an example. Yeah, I'm not sure if I have any example. Let me. So, I mean, the fun, you know, to make it work. So you start from any, so this works for any algebraically closed field, right? With a non-trivial valuation. And if you're, you know, if you're, already, okay, sorry. So if your original field doesn't have this property, so you can always, you know, take a field extension with a non-trivial valuation. For example, from complex number, you can always go to the, uh, complex number and then kuzu series right mm -hmm. so probably the bad example would be something you know which is not um yeah maybe the field is not closed i mean that's the first thing that you have to exclude but i don't have it like i don't have like any example right now okay so i mean it could be characteristic zero and still it's a bad example I mean, in theory, yes, but I really okay. don't know like how bad okay. this um, this condition could be. Yeah. 